Ladies and gentlemen, there is a saying that in life we are only guaranteed a handful of things. Death, taxes, although that one might be debatable, not in my case, but in some of yours. And third is Magnus Carlsen winning a chess tournament when he participates. Fourth might be me wearing hoodies in my videos. Um, but sometimes Magnus participates in a tournament, and the chess gods are not too fond, and something completely insane happens. And this is one of those days. See, a couple of days ago, the first tournament of the 2024 Champions Chess Tour completed. And Magnus Carlsen had an uncharacteristic conclusion to his event at the hands of the one and only Ali Reza Firuja. Ali Reza Firuja, originally born in Iran, now uh, representing France. Ali Reza Firuja was the chosen one. Magnus Carlsen once said he would literally not defend his title against anybody not named Firuja. Crazy. And sometimes they meet and they put on a show when they play. And today, I'm going to take you through that show. So, this was the finale, but Magnus was in the winner's bracket. So Magnus had not gotten knocked out, which meant Ali Reza Firuja had to not only defeat Magnus once, he had to then reset the final and beat him again. And the circumstances under which he did this will blow your mind. They will absolutely blow your mind. So this was game number one. They sit down. They're playing against each other. And Magnus, by the way, had a reaction that was so epic. He, like, chucked the water bottle. I mean, I love seeing that, that emotion out of the players. Because, you know, chess players, when they play games, look like this. They look like this. And then they look like this. And then they look like... And that's as much emotion as we get out of a chess player. But I love these online rapid and, and, and blitz events because these guys are like throwing things across the room. So, game begins. We have e4, e5, knight f3, knight c6. We have a Spanish. And we have uh, a Spanish with this move d6 and g6. All right, Magnus commits to the d3 Spanish. Not a Spanish where you're going to play d4 right away. And uh, uh, Ali Reza plays kind of like a King's Indian setup. Putting the bishop on the g7 square. It's one of the ways to play this opening. And uh, because you're going to support your center in an uncharacteristic way, where usually you have a bishop on e7, that actually enables you to play moves like d5. Right? You don't generally just get to do this with black and the Spanish. So Firuja uh, accepts the damaging of his structure because he gets the light-squared bishop. Magnus tries to explode the center. We have knight takes on e5. And then we have another trade here on d4 as he was trying to undermine Magnus's knight. And Magnus takes on h6. Bishop takes right? Bishop takes b3. I'm not really sure why this game is from Black's perspective, but uh, regardless. Queen takes d4. Knight takes g6. Magnus sacrificing a knight early in this game. Let me just flip that back. Magnus sacrificed the knight to open up Ali Reza's king, but uh, everything was well protected. And even though Magnus, look at that move. Look at that move from Magnus Carlsen. That's, by the way, that's just a full rook sacrifice. You, you can't take it, though, because after queen f6, my rook gets in on the seventh rank, and I win. Just super, you know, low-key. But, yeah, Firuja just goes for a counterattack and actually has the upper hand by the time the game is uh, nearing its conclusion. But I think he didn't want to take any risk, and the players just shuffle the pieces and make a draw. So that was the first game that they played, right? Remember, Magnus at this point leads the head-to-head the -head because Magnus is in the winner's final, which means... That's how double elimination works. So we go to a second game, right? The score is now half to half, right? Uh, Firuja plays a London. Magnus plays a very provocative London. And I mean, I got to tell you, F6 and G5 is some wild stuff. I actually have a video where I cover this really ridiculous system that you can play against the London. Uh, and uh, it's surprisingly resilient. And there's another way to play this, which is where you, you take the center like this. And that's very, very tough to meet if you don't know what you're doing with the white side. Now, Magnus plays g5 and bishop f5. I can't believe this is a real thing. It is. It's actually one of the more annoying ways to deal with as a London player. London players watching this will know we y'all hate this stuff, right? Because London, you play because you're lazy, boring, have no interest in life. No, just kidding. That's the stereotype about the London. London, you play because you want an easy-to-play opening with white, which is the greatest opening ever invented. 
but you don't want to deal with this. I mean, you play the London because because you don't want all of this stuff. And and yeah, Magnus brings the fight to Ali Reza. But I gotta tell you, he makes a lot of weaknesses in his position. And Ali Reza is so good at dynamics, so good at making a game exciting. Magnus continues to push pawns, which is something he almost never does. He does not push this many pawns. He is very, very, very careful with his play. And suddenly he's pushed them too far. And now Ferruja is going to make a breakthrough. And yeah. Magnus did say he was uncharacteristically playing uh, poorly that day. which is, And he's also getting away from the game he normally plays. He usually doesn't move this many pawns. He, he, he do, generally keeps his pawns very, very responsibly positioned. Ali Reza just has to find a way forward now. But, but suddenly he can't, and he doesn't have a lot of time. He's got less than a minute. Magnus plays knight c5. He's losing. He's losing, he loses a pawn, but look at Ali Reza getting all his pieces into the position. Has Magnus on the ropes, it is a plus three advantage. But you gotta beat Magnus like 20 times in the same game, and even though you get all of this, he saves himself. In this position, it was Ali Reza's perhaps final moment. He needed to play queen to c3. And the idea of queen c3 is, let's say I go here, rook c5. Can't take, because knight b6 is a discovered attack, and if queen c3 and the king had run this way, uh, rook e6 is winning because after knight e6, there is this absolutely beautiful checkmate. That is just straight up checkmate. The king is stuck and the rook is pinning the knight to the king. So, yeah, oops. But Ali Reza's advantage goes away and Magnus saves the. Po he had to find rook before. Magnus is losing again. Completely losing. Knight e3, his knight is darting back. G3, one final attempt at complicating. Oh my goodness, Ali Reza had to go king to f2. Get to go king f2. He played a move with seven seconds on the clock that looked like it, it did the right thing, but after this, oh my goodness, and now we, we get a draw. Magnus takes literally all of Ali Reza's pawns. Okay, so Ferruja was really close to winning this game. He failed, right? Again, allow me to remind you, they have two games remaining. Ferruja has to win one of them to not go down. Okay. Okay. So, Magnus is in the winner's bracket. Ferruja is not, right? Ferruja's got to win. So, here we go. Magnus has the white pieces in this game. Let me rotate it back to white side. And he plays a Catalan. An opening that he used to win the World Chess Championship in 2021. And he's playing it against you, Bishop G2. A very solid system. Black playing a5. Very professional stuff here. Magnus taking on d5. Playing on the c file. All right, knight c3, queen a4. Ferruja trying to make it wacky. He goes back to d1. And now, now Magnus is like, oh, I got a target. I, I'm going to target the rook on c4. I'm going to bring my bishop, right? I'm going to play a4. I'm using everything Ali Reza did to punish him. Now I'm going to plant the knight on b5. I mean, Magnus is playing his game. This is a really, really bad situation for Ali Reza. Look at this. Rook c1. Do you know why Magnus is trading everything? Because who's going to protect the pawn on a5 when the queen side clears? Nobody! Nobody is going to defend the pawn on a5 when the queen side clears. Nobody is going to defend it. In fact, I'm threatening bishop... I'm threatening bishop c7 now! Because I'm defending it through the rook. That's called x-ray defense. You just learned something today. Look at that! Hey, if you're watching on, like, the smart TV... Look at the screen. Bishop c7. The idea of bishop c7... You target the queen and the pawn. Rook can't take for the two pieces because the rook guards through the enemy rook, right? Because the knight is also guarding. X-ray defense, all right? Use that in your next corporate call. And Magnus plays h4, very common. h6, h5, taking space. Knight d2, bishop b2, just slowly improving. Knight e4, knight b. Okay, slowly improving. Magnus playing his game. And as always, Ali Reza is down a lot on time. Ali Reza's slow, man. Not in, not in the head. I'm saying he's slow on the chessboard. He's, a, he's brilliant in the head. He's just slow on the chessboard. He's, he's slow in every format, except Blitz and Bullet, because you can't be that slow. It's kind of, like, ironic. But he is always down to, like, a minute. And <coughs> it just doesn't work. It didn't work in the last game. And Magnus even has the luxury to allow this. And he plays Bishop to B8. Bro, this is straight up one of the most disrespectful moves I have ever seen. Do you understand what the idea of Bishop to B8 is, my friends? The idea is to trap the queen because the knights prevent 
the escape. What the? What? Bro just straight up moved the bishop to the other, to his opponent's side of the board, and he... Yeah. And, um... He doesn't convert it the way the engine wants, but he goes to an endgame, the knights are still on the board, and, uh, and he puts the knight on d6, and again, the engine was yelling here, but ultimately... Yeah, ultimately, Magnus is just up a knight. And chess is hard when you play the best player in the world. It's a lot harder when you are down a knight. I'm just, I'm, look, hot take, all right? I know you guys don't come here for a lot of my controversial opinions, but that is one of my most controversial, I, I will tell you. I think it's hard to beat Magnus Carlsen when you are down a knight. Uh, Firuja still does a very nice job creating counterplay, may I say, trying to do it, but... It's just too little too late. You're not going to beat him down a bishop either. <laughs> You're down, down a bishop. There are no knights on the board. Uh, and uh, it, the only way that you can draw this game is if you somehow get rid of the pawn and you survive one bishop versus two. That you cannot win, but white has all the pawns. And uh, bishop d6 stops it. This one is over after 59 moves, and Magnus Carlsen defeats Ali Reza Firuja. Normal. I mean, you would think this is just a normal video where Magnus... Beats his opponent. That's it. But Feruja said, I ain't gonna go away. You kind of know what happens in this video. You just kind of want to see what happens and how it happens. And really? Yeah, well, I'm, I was not exaggerating when I said this was kind of nuts. This was a very, very, very crazy video. It's a very crazy storyline here as well. So, D4, D5. We go for an exchange queen's game, but declined. The setting and the premise of this game is Magnus leads two to one. Ali Reza not only has to win this game, he also has to win the Armageddon. So they're gonna tie this. He has to win the playoff and then he has to reset the final, which is ridiculous stuff. Magnus has to not lose. And if there was an opening that the chess gods invented to not lose a chess game, it is the queen's gambit declined. The queen's gambit declined is the Toyota Camry of chess openings. Old reliable, doesn't need many upgrades, occasional feature changes, excellent gas mileage, and all the ubers use it. So h6, bishop to h4, if there's an opening that you play to be solid, boring, relatively uneventful, and get you to where you need to go, it is the queen's gambit declined. f3, bishop, and I am not, I'm not saying anything bad about the Toyota Camry, Toyota Camry is a great car. It's a great car, all right? Bishop f2, bishop h7, and Magnus just has an uber-solid position. So Ali Reza knows he's got to play for a win. How do you beat Magnus Carlsen? Like, he's in a situation where the, you know, the planet will blow up uh, unless he beats Magnus Carlsen. So he plays e4. You, you got to go for it. Provocative play, allowing Magnus to now have a target, rook d8 and all these types of things, right? c5, Magnus does try to utilize his target, right? But now e5, the thing is when you have a desperate opponent, you kind of have to play enterprising chess. You kind of have to play exciting chess. C takes d4, bishop d4, Magnus opts for a bishop trade, but he stumbles into a fork. I mean, he doesn't stumble into it. He absolutely knew this was coming. And now after knight c5, knight c5, he actually loses a piece. He loses a piece. The, the, the knight on f6 can be taken, but he planned that. It was actually better for Feruja to take here first. He didn't like this. He thought that in this position, he's going to have a very difficult time. But as it turns out, queen c3, everything is protected. And if you play here to try to get me to not castle, I'm going to offer a rook trade. And then I'm going to trade all the pieces. Ali Reza takes the knight first, and now he's in trouble. He should have traded the bishop for the knight. Now that he can't trade the bishop for the knight, Magnus targets the bishop. So Firuja had a chance there to just straight up win the game for a second time. He doesn't, he doesn't quite catch all the details, and now he will probably lose his dark squared bishop. And he does lose his dark squared bishop. Queen d4. Not only does he lose the dark squared bishop, Magnus trades the pieces. The game is over. Yes, Ali Reza can take on b7, but we have 92 check, takes, takes. Magnus Carlsen literally invented rook end games. You can fact check that, it will not be correct, but it sounded very, very interesting for me to say. And that is what content creation is all about. Lying to the audience. No, just kidding. Unless you're not gonna name any names. Not gonna name any names. Content creation should be a very, very large amount of truth.
and some exaggeration. B4. King G7. Rook F4. Ali Rez is going to work. We have two pawns over here, two pawns over here. Two and one. He's up a pawn. A4. There, we, there he goes. Ali Rez has also got one minute again. Like he always does. This should be one. Whoa. I don't actually know what that move does. It just looks very interesting. Bishop, e4, Bishop f3 back. And I just place f5. Oh, that was the idea. Oh my god. Defending himself and gaining some space. h3, king f6. And just like Magnus can win a rook endgame, he can defend one like a freaking demon. Ali Reza just can't get anything going, and he has 10 seconds on the clock. And not only does he have 10 seconds on the clock, bro, tell me how this man Magnus is playing for a win. He is playing for a win. He, this man is down two pawns in a rook endgame. That is a ridiculous amount of material. And he's playing for a win. He's making Ali Reza play moves like G4. It's over. It's over. Rook C8. It's a ladder mate. Rook F6. It's over. It's over if you give a check and push the E pawn. It's over if you give a check, trade the rook and push the e pawn. Why is it over if you play rook c1, rook f1? And by the way, that happens because for take, take, e3. Black has a very simple plan and white cannot stop it. g5. I don't go stop the pawn, although I might do that. That might be a draw, but no, I'm not going to lose my pawn. I go here, here. It's mate. You get mated. King g1, rook here. I take the pawn and then you get mated. Rook c1, rook c2. You could have also just played rook to e3. You could have just played e3. You didn't have to play rook c1. He could have just went e3 and done all of that. Rook c1, rook f1. And in this position, Magnus plays rook c2. And the idea of rook c2 is he's making a draw. So if rook d1, you know, even if the king goes back, it's a draw. Because you cannot stop perpetual check. And Magnus is going to win the entire championship. But he accidentally makes Ali Reza find the only move, which is Rook here stopping Rook G2. And it's accidentally winning for White. It is winning for White. And it is not complicated because you literally push the pawn. That is it. Magnus was, was shaking off the poor play and was still winning. He was defending games. He was still getting, you know, he was still winning. His results were still... And all of a sudden, he was screaming. He was cursing in Norwegian, English, Spanish, Dutch. I don't know how many languages he speaks. Suddenly, he can't do anything. If you play E2, rookie one, that's it. You straight up can't stop the pawn. You start running backwards. I push. You start block. Oh, well, I mean, sure, but... And I'm going to push the other pawn, too. And I'm going to play king f2. If this, just rook f3. Or king g2. Everything is winning. It doesn't matter. Because you can't cross the third rank. You can't stop protecting your pawn. Rook g8, I just play h4. h4, king e5, h5. I'm completely winning. This is insanity. And all of a sudden, from the absolute depths of defeat, king e1, rook b2, Magnus was irate beside himself threaten one last checkmate if you make a queen you get mated so don't make the queen don't make the queen rook b1 king g2 you can't even push the pawn absolutely unbelievable magnus could not believe it he loses the game at the final moment ali reza firuja kept on fighting what a man that's why his profile photo was then changed to tyson fury all right, speaking of, well, I'm watching this a couple days before Fury Usyk. Should be a crazy fight. And now, not only did he win this game, Ali Reza held the Armageddon. It was like a, it was a draw. It wasn't a particularly exciting game. And, and, and the Armageddon, he, he wins it with black by forcing the draw. That's how chess works. In chess, we have Armageddon, which is where white and black play a game. White has uh, more time, but black has draw odds, meaning they win if the game ends in a draw. And that takes us to the grand final reset. Ali Reza survives, fights and fights and fights and fights Magnus and will not go away and he forces a grand final reset. Magnus opens with E4 in the first game. Now these two, it's a brand new series. First series is over. We have a D3, we have an Italian, Gioco Piano, H3. This line has been played many, many times. Queen B3 is a sideline. I think generally white plays rookie one, knight F1. 
Queen b3 is a move, and then Magnus plays this move a5, preventing the Black Knight from going there. Ali Reza, meanwhile, says, all right, Magnus, doink, doink, let's attack you instead. Bishop e3, let's bring the other horse. Look at this. Planting the knights firmly on the king side, and then he's ready to fight over there as well. D-E-D, -E 95. By the way, the bishop's ready to come back. Like, if you wait a couple more moves with white not to make the trade, it's going to be a huge problem. For example, like, if I play bishop 2-E-2 here, already there are insane sacrifices brewing around the white king, which is why Magnus trades the dark squared bishop. Whoa! Ali Reza doesn't take, he takes 24, he's threatening the bishop and he's threatening mates! Oh my goodness, so he takes this bishop, we have opposite colored bishops, and he's just straight up up a pawn. Ali Reza is just cleanly up a pawn in the first game of the next rapid. Knight to d2, puts the queen back, and Magnus is just, the, he's two pawns down. Okay, wait, not quite. I thought he was going to take on d6, but he's two pawns down. Queen e5 check, and Ali Reza says, you know what, I'm not interested. We're not going to do any funny business. We're going to play this position. Even if you're Magnus, you can't beat me. It's not possible. Bishop c5, rook d8. It's just not possible. You could take this pawn. Here comes h6. By the way, f5 is apparently like a solid minus one advantage for black. Because if knight g5, the bishop goes here. And black just keeps keeps going. Just keeps pushing. So, again though, Firuja, a bit low on time. We've been here before. Three minutes versus one. Like, I don't know how he stumbles into the same situation every single time. Maybe winning this particular game wasn't on his mind. It was sort of like, I'm better. I'm calling the shots. And we kind of effortlessly rook d8. And uh, the players just agreed to a draw here. Players just agreed to a draw. So, nothing happens in game number one. Which means we have two games left. Well, that's it. Two games left. Here we go. Feruja, Magnus. Now, Feruja gets white. Magnus plays the Petrov. Magnus does not play the Petrov, bro. Like, ever. Literally ever. Like, I go look. I'm going to go look this up. There's a website, which is... Not the prettiest, but it's just chessgames.com. Player black is Carlson. And the opening is Petrov. Let's see. Uh, Magnus Carlson has played 15 Petrovs in his life. In his life. The last time Magnus Carlson played a Petrov in a high level game. 2013, before he was the world champion, versus Anand. Dog, dog he hates this opening. <laughs> like, he never plays this opening. Feruja had this man doing stuff he would never ever do. He was like, you know what? I'm going to play the Petrov. Like, because whatever, you know? And now D4, not, now obviously Magnus knows literally every opening, right? He plays D4. He knows every opening. He just doesn't like certain openings, hence he doesn't go for them. Knight D2 plays Queen D7. What the f what even is this? Bishop D3, Knight C5. Now the knight comes back to E6. All relatively normal stuff. And he gets a completely normal position. But it's still the Petrov. It's still fascinating that he played an opening he literally hasn't played in a decade. In a decade! Ten years! Online, offline, like in serious tournaments, he has not played it. Maybe he's played it in Blitz. But better chance that he's playing like e4, h5 in Blitz or h6 than the Petrov. <clears throat> anyway, game got very tense. Feruja kept attacking Magnus, looking for queen h6. Look, I mean, by the way, that's just completely winning. Like, if black doesn't fight, like, if black plays rook d8, you just play queen h6, you win the game. Because knight g5, queen g7, queen h7, you just win. This is complete in this. It's mate. It's mate. It's mate, right? So, Magnus sees that, of course, goes for a queen trade. And uh, gives up a pawn, but tries to create ca uh, tactical complications. Uh, but uh, uh, Feruja has got a nice advantage here. He actually could have gone for GF3 instead, and you can't take on F3 because of rookie 4 apparently, and some attacks. Maybe kicking out the queen a little bit later. Maybe bishop e2 to trap the queen. Hello, hello, by the way. But okay, instead of that, queen f4, knight f4, and... Uh, this position, where Firuja once again is down two minutes versus our main protagonist, G5. And in this game, Ali Reza had a very pleasant edge, but slowly Magnus unraveled the position. And here Firuja offered a draw. He played bishop c2 and he said, Magnus, I'm giving you a way out. I'm threatening your king, but please take the draw. Because once I take, you're going to take. And I'm actually kind of surprised... 
But Magnus took the draw. Uh, and I say surprised because, you know, he could have went like, let's say, knight c6. And he could have just said, well, Ferruja's got a minute. So I'm going to, you know, but he was like, nope, draw. Which means, my friends, this is the end of the game. This is the end of the video. This is the end of the, uh, of the match. They played uh, seven games against each other. Uh, the first pair, uh, eight, eight games. The first miniseries was won by Ferruja. Revenge from a position of down 2-1, down in game four. He came back like a monster, like fifth round, you know, Nadal, Djokovic style, like... And now they go to an Armageddon, and you'll notice Magnus has 7 minutes and 24 seconds. That's because if the game ends in a draw, he wins. That's the way Armageddon works in chess. Why 724? They bid. They submit a bid that says, I want to play black. My wager is 7 minutes and 24 seconds, and the person that bids lowest will win. So, Ali Reza creates a bishop's opening, right? This is the bishop's opening. Uh, and it, it allows black to play like this. It's why you play bishop c4. Whereas if you develop knight f3, knight c6, black would not have c6. So that is the major difference between these two openings. And the point Ali Reza uh, has to make here is he needs to get a slightly worse position. He doesn't need to, but the point is he keeps as many pieces on the board as possible with his time advantage. Now, admittedly, Ali Reza gets down on time in literally every game he plays. But DEDE, -D -E, all right? Bishop back to c7. And now b4. Notice Ali Reza's only traded one pawn. And knowing what he knows about Magnus being slightly off form, right? He keeps the tension, and Magnus makes a mistake. Plays knight to f4, which allows this very powerful response, which Ali Reza spots, bishop takes f4, and e5, opening up this attack. Remember, Magnus just needs a draw. Knight to d5. Now, there is a winning idea here for white. The winning idea is not queen d3, because then just g6, but knight d6. And only when the bishop takes queen d3, setting up a sniper on the rook and the queen. That is the mage, that's the winning idea. Alirza spends a minute and he misses it. He misses the idea. Now he's only a minute away from Magnus. That's not a lot of time. In a seven to six minute game at this level, it's not a lot of time. Magnus quickly plays g6. Now we have queen d2. And again, Magnus should have respected the knight d6 idea because I think Ali Reza spots it now. And Magnus kind of just plays bishop e6. And now once again, this is working. And it's working in a different way. In the previous position, I had these ideas. That's all gone. But the reason this works is because the queen has shifted over to d2. And that's very important because the queen defends the knight. Remember we talked about x-ray defense? We talked about defending a piece through an enemy piece. This is not x-ray defense, but it kind of is. I defend the, the, the knight through the enemy knight because of the pin because of the pin c4 is a pin and if you take i'm not gonna take back but i'm gonna go here because my queen is protected so knight d6 uh-oh magnus plays rook d8 spent a minute and a half on that move that's a lot of time that's like 20 ish percent of his remaining time and ali Raza absolutely dominates absolutely clamps that down he has firmly placed the knight in the black position, and black has massive dark squared weaknesses. Now he's just going to keep improving. Magnus begins fighting back. Ali Reza playing quickly and confidently. That's the most important thing. Magnus, by playing the move b6, created a massive weakness in his position of the pawn on c6. The bishop goes back to d7. Now Ali Reza has to surgically, precisely cut his way through, like Gordon Ramsay blindfolded cutting that chicken. That was a real clip. Seriously nice clip. And he does. He finds it. And he finds it in nine seconds. The cleanest cut of the meat. Take, take. Very simple. Take the pawn. Now he is a pawn up. And he has all the remaining benefits of his position. There is absolutely nothing to be done. Magnus tries to take over the B file. Ali Reza's right there. It doesn't matter. Black can't do anything. Take, take. He goes for a rook trade. Might as well. You might get to an endgame that you might hold. Just knight back to a three. Now, he spent a minute on that move. He spent a minute moving the knight back. He could have just kept going forward, right? Knight f3. You got Magnus in an endgame, but it's only upon disadvantage. Bishop c7. Ali Reza plays queen b4, trying to take the b-file once again. Bishop has blocked the queen's infiltration. So the, queen, so the knight goes in, right, to take advantage of the, of the bishop move. Knight goes to c8. Knight takes on a7. That's two pawns. That's a lot. 
I don't care if you're Magnus. That is a lot. The bishop goes to a4. The queen goes into b7. Oh my goodness, he can't move anything. d4. Only thing he's got left. By the way, Ali Reza is now very close to him on time. Queen d8, how do you break through this blockade? By coming back. By coming back. By creating the threat on the two pawns. Bishop to c2. Now we go for the pawn, but first we go for the bishop. Bishop e4. Removing one of Magnus's two remaining powerful pieces and winning his pawn. And winning his pawn. And after queen takes e5, queen c4 is on the board. The c pawn has a jet pack. Ali Reza is two pawns up despite still getting lower on the clock, but there is nothing you can do. You cannot give a check. You cannot get, you can give this check, but then I just move my king. King goes to h1. There is no way to give me endless checks. If the bishop moves, all I have to do is take it and push. And in this position, Magnus Carlsen resigned and Ali Reza Ferruja won the chess.com classic, the first event of the year in the Champions Chess Tour. Monumental comeback. Epic fight. And sometimes Magnus Carlsen does not win the chess tournament that he plays in. The chosen one, Ali Reza Ferruja. Gets the job done. Incredible stuff. Now get out of here.